Good morning everyone. I'm Dr. Harshini, second year junior resident in Department of Radio Diagnosis in Dr. D.Y. Patil Hospital and Research Center. My topic is Significance of Face Mask Image in MRI in Acute Stroke Patients. So the objective is to know the significance of face mask imaging in differentiation of hemorrhage and calcifications in acute stroke patients. Materials and methods Source of data is from a prospective study of 100 patients referred from emergency medicine and neurology departments. Inclusion criteria, patients of all the age groups, both men and women, who were having symptoms of stroke and headache were included. Exclusion criteria, patients who are claustrophobic, unwilling or with any implants and pacemakers and also pregnant women were excluded. MRI protocol which was done was MRI brain stroke profile with flare, DWI, ADC, susceptibility weighted angiography and face mask sequences done on 3T machine. So SWI is a new means to enhance contrast in MR imaging until recently with the exception of face being used for large vessel flow quantification or for use in inversion recovery sequences most diagnostic MR imaging relied only on the reading of magnitude information. The face information was ignored and usually discarded before even reaching the viewing console. Face images, however, contain a wealth of information about local susceptibility changes between tissues, which can be useful in measuring iron content and other substances that can change the local field. And to see different types of contrast in SWI filter face images for different diseases. And also to make the information more accessible to radiologists, though face and magnitude images separately are also critical pieces of information. So first, an HP filter is applied to remove the low spatial frequency components components of the background field. This is usually done by using a 64 into 64 low pass filter divided into original face image to create an HP filter effect. So the end result is a HP filter. Once we have a pristine face image with the background field changes removed, the door is open to differentiate one type of tissue from another depending on their susceptibilities. This may be particularly useful at high field because the T1 difference between tissues begin to decrease but any changes in susceptibility remains the same. So here are the steps of reconstruction in SWI. So first image is the raw face image and next is a HP filtered face image with a central filter size of 32 into 32 and next is a filtered face image where there is a central filter size of 64 into 64. So here are some of the findings taken from our patients. First is an example of intraparenchymal hemorrhage. Here images are the axial, axial section of MRI brain of DWI, SWAN and face contrast image where you could see diffusion restriction corresponding blooming as seen and in face contrast image there is signal dropout favoring of hemorrhage and here are, there are the two examples of calcified granuloma. Uh, you could see there is a blooming noted and also there is corresponding high, hyper intense signal noted and there is no any signal dropout noted in both the MRI images favoring of calcified granuloma. So here is another example of infarct with hemorrhagic transformations where you could see blooming in the right parietal region and corresponding phase contrast image there is signal dropout and uh, there is no any hyper intense signal noted favoring of hemorrhage. And next is an example of patient with a thrombus where you could see there is diffusion restriction with corresponding blooming loaded. But in phase contrast image, there is signal dropout favoring thrombus. And next is an example for micro bleeds where you could see multiple small uh, blooming noted in SW image uh, that is the susceptibility weighted angiography and corresponding there is signal dropouts noted in phase contrast images favoring micro bleeds. An example of falx calcification where there is uh, blooming noted in the falx cerebri in the frontal region and corresponding there is hyper intense signal noted favoring calcification. So the results we got out of 100 cases were in that 60 patients had micro bleeds and 10 patients had granulomas and 58 patients had thrombus, 20 patients had calcifications and 20 patients had intraparenchymal hemorrhage and 15 patients had infarcts with hemorrhagic transformation. So According and because of this study, we were able to differentiate because of face and mass, we were able to dip, differentiate hemorrhage and calcification in these 100 patients. 
So face mask imaging plays a major role in differentiation of calcification from hemorrhage and it also acts as a supplement tool in acute stroke patients which guides further management. And here are the references from which we have like used for our study. Thank you.